here. What's up everybody, it's your favorite builder's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the MP Grapple. I have a couple things that I, I, I already have had issues with with this, but I, I want to get a couple things out of the way, and I like it overall, don't worry. One, we're going to be transforming from bot to uh, vehicle mode because with Inferno we went from vehicle to bot mode and I like to give both transformations if I have the opportunity to look at two versions of the same mold or similar molds I like to show both. I just want to say up front getting it back into vehicle mode is a bit of a bear doing it in, in front of the camera so it, it's not the easiest thing we're going to get our way through it. Uh, it's a little bit easier when you're just sitting with it on your lap, so to speak. The other thing I want to do is I want to shout out a Transformers group uh, in the UK. Oi, oi, good morning, mate. The group is called TF3PUK, so TF Third Party UK. Uh, they show me a lot of love in there. Shout out to Chris and them. They, they, um, they take care of me, so I want to make sure I shout that group out. Now, let's get to him. Let's get to accessories. As you can see, he holds his gun just fine. Uh, I, ha I can't get him to hold this one for the life of me. You may have better luck if you have smaller fingers, but it is at an awkward angle, and it's just... Let's talk about it, right? So let's get this one out of the way, and we'll just talk about this. It's like a screwdriver, silver paint, purple paint, white plastic... Uh, you can see I've worn the paint off trying to get it to fit in there. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, my hands just aren't built for that. So theoretically, it would tab in to the hand, and then this little notch here would go around the this portion of the hand. But I'm sure someone else with smaller fingers can get it to work. You can also store it inside, uh, grapple by opening this up and tabbing it. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to to show this on camera either but there is a angled slot there for it to peg in and it does fit in there with the hand so that is pretty cool uh, just you know food for thought his other gun as you can see is just a simple cast no uh, paint on there except for the paint that keeps scratching off on the orange which is an issue I'm having both sides uh, with this with the way that this paint adhered to to the to the piece By lifting up on this front flap here exposing that port and then taking the weapon and sliding it down in if that is a look you're interested in it's not one that I'm interested in he comes with a chrome version of one of these which is fine he also comes with like a gunmetal version. I'm not sure which is tune accurate. I'd have to go back and look. I'm guessing this. And then you just take the hand. You can replace the piece there. I just wanted to show that. And I think there is a way to, let's see. I think somebody told me that there's a way to do it without taking the piece off, but there, yeah, you can do it. So close that up. I think somebody told me that on my Inferno one. So look, look at look at me learning, and there it is, and you can swap that out, no problem. He comes with a blueprint of the thing he was building with the Constructicons, and it is awesome. I love accessories like this. I think it is very unique, very smart, and and adds for a very like uh, unique display, you know, in in terms of posing. Obviously, to go with it, he comes with the actual piece. These pieces here all rotate down. On hinges, this middle piece does come out. It has a turquoise finish. It has a yellow finish. So not a whole lot to complain about here. Tons of sculpted detail. N no issues. The only thing I would point out is that I don't know exactly how he's supposed to hold it. I got to sneeze. <coughs> Pardon me. Good grief. The kids. It's the kids. It's coming again. <coughs> hey. You got me sick. Are you going to cry about it? No, but you know, you did take responsibility for it. A little sorry, never hurt anybody. You know what I mean? From what I can see, you take this and you just sort of rest it in there and then wrap this around the thumb. I can't get him to hold it any other way. I'm sure there's some expert out there that knows how to do it, but to me, it just seems like a balancing act. I, I can't, like, you can't get it inside and then uh, the thumb around that middle bit. So, or at least I'm not comfortable doing it. So either way, it works. It's just not optimal. 
And then he comes with a different head crest, uh, gray with the yellow or orange painted on. It's sloppy. The paint is done really sloppy, as you can see on the lines there, inside there, inside on that piece. And then that line work is relatively clean, given the rest of it. If you want this look, uh, you can have this. But mine, at least, is painted quite poorly. And then we have uh, the happy face with the slotted lines on the side. We have the straight face with no slotted lines. Pardon me. Good grief as you can see. And then we have uh, the screaming face with no slotted lines. And those are the faces. And then we have the two different chest piece options, one with the flat plastic and no windshield wipers and one with windshield wipers and the chrome. And they're easy to swap out, which is simply done by pulling here and replacing with the alternate piece. And then lastly, we have two different accessories to go on the end of the crane. One is this claw, which hinges here at each base arm and swivels, as well as uh, hinges there. It does seem like uh, an extra hinge here would have been nice, but I don't think it would have really actually done anything. You know, when I first got it, I was like, man, it doesn't, it doesn't hinge there, but I don't think it would actually help. Uh, I think it, it works just fine. And then we have a, a scoop bucket, um, which swivels here and, you know, hinges. And let's show you how to put those on. You just take this and push down, and it's a slot system. And you take your other piece and slot in. Same as before, unslot, slot in. And you can spin this whichever way you want. So let's talk about them. Uh, the one problem I noticed straight away was I had a little bit of flash inside the eye. If you can see, it's in that upper corner. Uh, right there. Actually, it may, not be, it may just be that the blue wasn't painted all the way. Can you see that? Let's see if I can't get it to focus. There. Can you see that? Anyway, irritating, frustrating, distracting, but at least I have a different face I can swap it out with if I want. Uh, it's funny, this this little bit on top of his head um, seemed like a bit much to me, but I went and looked back and sh sure as heck it's in there in the cartoon. Uh, just didn't realize it. Uh, the head is on a ball peg. Uh, there's a yellow finish throughout, and it's done well, but there are issues uh, with a lot of the paint chipping off. I'll try to show those as we go through, which I forgot to do, so let me just show you real quick. I got paint chipping there. I have paint chipping on the shoulder right there. I have uh, the silver paint on the tires chipping. I have overflow paint here. I have a lot of paint paint issues, but the good news is is that it is all mon minor. You know, they're all small mishaps and mistakes and small chips. The head is on a ball peg. You get up to there, so that's great. Down, and you can even cheat this back bit up a little bit to kind of get the extra if you want for a picture or something. And then the swivel, so that's no problems. And then we have the torso here. I have the chrome bit on. I think I'm going to keep his chrome and the other one gray. I haven't quite decided all of it yet. Doesn't matter. Chrome detailings, and then the uh, Autobot symbol tampoed on. The windows with the translucent plastic, which is not my favorite, but it's there. And that's pretty much it. Now, what I did want to talk about briefly is the waist swivel. So... To, when you have it transformed properly, which I think anyway is with these tires plugged into the side there, the actual waist swivel is very limited. But what I've done is I've just untabbed here and rotated up on both sides. And I think I even like that look a bit better. And then you get much more of a waist swivel. So it's up to you. It's what you're comfortable with. But I like it. On the shoulders... You know, you have this hinge here if you want to cheat for a picture or something, but really you don't get that articulation. You do have a ratchet universal here, forward and out to the side to 90 degrees, and that gets you all the way around, so no problems. Bicep, bicep swivel, the joints are a little tight on this thing all around, and, and some of the transformation pieces are as well. And then there are some pieces that are loose, like this tire. You know, it keeps like flapping down there. And then uh, I'll show you this right now. I think it's one of these. I guess it's not that one. This one, yeah, this this is a little loose here on mine, um, but whatever. It's a uh, it's 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 a small complaint, but it's a complaint nonetheless. So I have to point it out. 
and then we have a, an elbow on a single hinge that gets you past 90 degrees, so that's all good. And I'll show you here the hand articulation, which is a wrist swivel, and the fingers are all on the base pin knuckle, so that's ultimately fine. No real issue there. All right. We'll take a look at the back of the figure real quick. Cleans up pretty clean, cleans up pretty well rather. We do have this piece, which is a little unsightly, but it's I think it's worth the cost of admission to get all that tucked up in the chest. So let's give them a pass. The hip skirts do rotate up, which gets you the, the Ratchet Universals, almost the full Monty, but you do get uh, slightly short of the full Van Dam. So that's fine. Thigh swivels built into the bottom of the universal. Knees are on a single hinge to get you 90 degrees. And then the feet, you have an ankle tilt down one click, up one click. So not the best, but a great rocker. So all that works pretty well. And, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about uh, Masterpiece recently in terms of reviewing them is with, you know, with, with just the finish on there and not a whole lot of extra detail to talk about, you can kind of get through the review fairly quickly. So we're going to transform them. Like I said, it's a, it's a little challenging to, to transform this design on camera. It's, it's not as difficult as it may seem. I, you know, I haven't shot it yet, but it's not as difficult as it may seem, or maybe it is, uh, depending on how, how rough it looks. But it is challenging to kind of keep track of all the pieces with the camera in front of you. Uh, outside of that, let's just go. So let's get him transformed. There's a couple things that you want to do just to kind of uh, start the process. The first one is uh, that should be locked in a bit better there, but I didn't have it quite right. But you lift this piece up here and that allows you to pull this whole crane arm out. You can then straighten this. This is just so I don't forget. Sp spin it around uh, here at this swivel. And then you can close these two pieces up and we'll get back to all that later. For the feet, take this back section here. This is all new stuff pretty much. So we're, we're going to deal with some of this later, but we just need to kind of open it up, so to speak. And I'll tell you, like, the tolerances on this are, are not as good as Inferno's. Uh, open this back piece here and open this piece here as well. And then, let's see. Open this front part just to taste so that we can take this piece out and rotate it up close that back in and then that will collapse all the way and then you can close this down a bit more and like I said we'll get back to that a little bit later so let's do the same on the other side open up the bottom of the feet open up the back of the feet make sure the shin is pressed forward a bit take this panel it's on a double hinge rotate it up rotate this piece down close that back up and then we're gonna take this back section which we collapsed and we're going to uh, do our best to untab it a bit. All right. Uh, we can then take the butt flaps, open them up on both sides, and spin them around. Let's deal with the cab. Untab the tires if you haven't done so already rock them down on the double hinge this kind of this section here you kind of have to kind of do it once so to speak let's see rotate here or actually let's straighten the arm out first so straighten the arm this whole mechanism here can each up just rotate to the top i believe and then tab in here and here you can always use this as a guide this gray paint here to line up same for the other side and Rotate the head around so that it's facing the back of the figure and then close this down on top of it You want to make sure that you uh, Just kind of shorten this as much as you can and rotate the side panels around but as you do so uh, fold this piece in and rotate the head back underneath into the cab then you can close that all the way around and 
close that piece as well on both sides. Fold this flap down. Mm. There. Be careful there. See mine jammed up. I just indented the plastic, I believe. Uh, and then just clean it up and we'll move on. And then pulling this piece here to the top. This hinges up and then down so that this section here fills in that space there. Then we just have to make sure that this whole thing is lined up properly. The hands, make sure that the back of the hand is facing outward and they will go in that cavity there and on the opposite side. It's hard to show this. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a, a cumbersome transformation to go back to um, vehicle mode in, in front of the camera. The other thing that we gotta make sure that we do, I'm gonna try to show you, is, is these two clips here and here have corresponding slots in the legs. Make sure that these uh, thigh pieces are pushed out of the way the best you can. And you just gotta smoosh it all together um, and hope for the best. It's, it's not impossible to do, uh, it's just, it can be a little uh, cumbersome to do on camera. There. Not too bad. And then I'll clean it up, we'll move forward. And now the final touches. Just pull this out, rotate that up, this part right here latches onto there. And then that closes in around it, solidifying that. And then for the front tires, you just come up and lock them into place. And you have it back in vehicle mode. I'll get it cleaned up a little bit. We'll take a look at her. And there it is in vehicle mode. And just to show you a size comparison real quick, there it is next to Tiger Track. So <clears throat> now that that's out of the way, rolls like a champ. Uh, this. This thing here, I will say, like, it's not, it's not easy. Um, it's, like, it doesn't move smoothly. I'm not sure if this is an individual results will vary or if everybody's having that issue. Uh, but it's a bit obnoxious. And then that extends to there, and it collapses to there. And, good grief, that sucks. Uh, outside of that, it's fine. And you have these stabilizers here. And then they also come down here. Plastic tires, wheel wells are painted, you know, which we, we kind of expected. I got a little paint chip there. Uh, but overall, uh, pretty good and kind of what we would expect. So I, I think it's it's fair. I think that all of it kind of works, at least in, in terms of, it's a little bit different, right? Because we already have some expectations after dealing with Inferno, and I think that it all sort of uh, deals well with those expectations. Another thing I'm noticing here is I'm scratching paint, yellow paint off uh, inside this stabilizer. So be mindful of that. Uh, outside of that, everything seems to pretty much be on the up and up. And for a quick comparison, there he is with the Make Toys version. And, you know, this comes down to personal preference uh, in terms of, you know, the more stylized look versus the more tune accurate. And it's that's a personal call. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping the Takara one for, for my representation on my G1 shelf just because I think it, it does, it's going to fit in better in the end. And size comparison wise, there he is with a Masterpiece car. Final thoughts wise, I think it's a great offering. I, I think that it's a really solid unit, but I do have a couple issues with it. The paint, for one, I, I, I have had some, some chipping issues along the way and some inconsistencies along the way, places where it didn't get a full code, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's definitely a complaint. And then the other complaint that I have is that there there's some joint inconsistencies, which I'm not used to seeing kind of this quickly. Usually it's like the fourth or fifth ver version of the mold that I start to see it, but uh, this is the second version of the mold and I'm seeing joint inconsistencies. A lot of the joints are too tight. And then there, as you saw, there's a few that are too loose. 
and that's really you know my only real legitimate complaint I think they did a great job on the sculpt I think the articulation is perfect I think and it does even have a bit of an ab crunch uh, it's ever so slight uh, but it's like there to there and then if you go much further than that you start undoing the transformation but I think that overall uh, the articulation is great the materials are good all of the hardware like the ratchets and stuff that all works well and like the, the, the figure has a strong presence I think the accessories are cool I wish that the gun the, the small screwdriver rather worked a bit better in terms of how easily it was it was used to put into his hand like maybe a, a longer handle but then I'm sure somebody would be like if you look closely at the Generation 1 animation, the screwdriver gun is actually quite small. And that's fine. I just would have preferred that it had fit in his hand a bit better. Cleans up like a champ. Alt mode works. Only thing that needs to be noted in addition to this is this is definitely in line with Takara's more recent uh, kind of take or angle on the more simplified sculpts, the more very cartoon accurate uh, look. And I told you guys I was going to have a, a video about the direction of Masterpiece and stuff. That is still coming. I, I just need a, a bit of a break in order to do it. But it's definitely coming, as is the video about where I purchase stuff. So that all that stuff is coming. I just I just need the time to do it. Bear with me. But it is definitely in line with their more recent releases in terms of aesthetics, and that either works for you or it doesn't. I think this one actually works a bit better than some because there's just certain things like the paint in the wheel wells and the warning stripes on the side of the head and on the on the on parts of the other parts of the truck and stuff that that kind of help break it up a little bit. Um, and at least they gave it a finish to kind of really drive home that paint and that real premium look. So do I recommend it? Absolutely, as long as you're okay with the aesthetic design, which I, uh, I, I, it's not my favorite. I like a little bit more, a little bit more bells and whistles without too many bells and whistles, but I'm still on board for it, if that makes sense. So I hope that helps, and I uh, hope that made sense. And other than that, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.